This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Sign up today and you'll also get access to Nebula, a video platform built by and for creators. So I have this platform. It's not the biggest platform of all time, but it's a bigger one than most people have. Now that comes with pros and cons, but overall I think it's cool. One of the many reasons that I think it's cool is because I get to say and share stuff that I know with certainty that lots of people will see and hear. So if I have a thought that I think is a good idea, I can put it out into the world and I know that my voice will be heard by at least a few people. And that of course comes with responsibility and I always try my best to keep that in mind. Of course, not everyone will be convinced of my ideas. Maybe no one will, but at least I got to express myself. Incidentally, I get messages almost daily from viewers who said that I have helped evolve or change their ideas on a given subject. And perhaps because of this effect, I often get questions of people asking how they can change minds, how they can help people evolve away from toxic or ignorant worldviews. So it might be kind of a surprise when I tell people that I don't think it's anyone's job to do that. Hi, I'm T1J. Follow me. This video, like all of my videos, would not be possible without my members and patrons, including homies like Julie Trujillo, The Reflex Wonder, Mike Yoakum, and Kisaya. If you'd like to support the channel, you can become a homie yourself by clicking the join button below the video or by checking out my page on Patreon. So in life or online, when we encounter people who have ideas that we think are bad, we might respond to that in several different ways. We might simply write them off as bad people and refuse to associate them or try to understand their point of view. At that point, they're villains, they're the enemy. If you know anything about me, you know I generally oppose that kind of behavior. I think humans are complex and I think we should almost always try to understand each other. Another approach, however, is to try to change that person's mind. This is often the approach that we take when the person in question is someone close to us. One of the absolute most common questions that I get from viewers is something to the effect of, Someone I interact with, my friend, my family member, or an acquaintance is someone who I think has bigoted or wrong-headed views. How can I have fruitful conversations with this person, if not get them to change their mind? And I can't help but interpret this question as, how can I fix people? Like, what are the magic words that I can say that will result in this person agreeing with me? Now, as you can probably tell, I don't think people work like that. And I think most people understand that people don't work like that. Yet I still get this question all the time. I think sometimes the reason we think we're not getting through to people is because of a flaw in our strategy, or maybe we're just not phrasing the argument correctly. But this could be indicative of something that I see a lot, and honestly, I see it mostly from progressive left-wing type of people. It's this you should already know better mentality. And I've talked about this a few times before in videos and on social media. There's this exasperated frustration that we have when we experience ideas that we deem harmful. We cannot fathom how a person's brain could work like this. We feel like there must be just some simple thing that we're missing. It's like if your computer stops working one day and you have no idea what's going on and you're super frustrated, like why the hell is this happening? But then you wake up the next day with a clear mind and you realize all you had to do was update your driver or something. The answers and correct ideas seem so obvious to us if only we could figure out a way to phrase it in a way that would make it just as obvious to other people. Well, my experience is that people don't tend to operate that way. Of course, people can change and evolve, but by and large, it seems to be the case that adult humans are the way they're gonna be for the most part. And when people do change, it's almost always very gradual and rarely based on their interactions with a single person. I've talked before about how there's actual research that supports the idea that people go through several stages before making any significant change within themselves. And most of these stages require action on their part. Unfortunately, you can't control other people. Even if you make an amazing argument, you can't force people to do anything about it. 
They have to be willing in the first place to even be open to the idea that they might be wrong about something. And even if they decide that maybe they could improve on something, they then have to develop a plan of action towards that improvement and then actively carry it out. That's a lot to ask for most people, especially people who don't see any good reason to do it. Now, I am not saying that we shouldn't stand up for what we think is right or that we shouldn't call out bad behavior. And as anyone who has ever changed or evolved as a person knows, sometimes that change is sparked by a seed that someone planted in your mind. You didn't change overnight, most likely, but the seed grew over months and years until your evolution was complete. And who's to say that you can't be the source of that seed for someone else? I think the older and more set in their ways a person is, this process is much harder, but people can still change. Don't think I'm not saying that. The issue is that frustration that I mentioned earlier. Many people do not seem satisfied with merely planting a seed. People literally stress themselves out and risk their own mental well being, freaking out because they can't fix their loved ones. And that's just not a good situation. I understand that often these are people you care about and sometimes people you have to spend a lot of time around, but they are still people with agency you can't and shouldn't presume to be able to control them. Part of being a mature adult is learning to coexist with people who think differently than you, even in ways you think are harmful. And this applies to your loved ones as well. I think you should feel free to express yourself and stand up for what you believe in and what you think is right. But you should also understand that you're probably not going to change anyone's minds, at least not anytime soon. That rarely happens. What you should instead strive to do, in my opinion at least, is to be understood. And this is where being respectful and making good arguments can come into play. If you come off as nagging or rude or mean or condescending, you can be sure that no one will listen to you. But if you explain your point of view in a reasonable and compassionate way, you're much more likely to be heard and you're much more likely to plant that seed in someone's brain. You're also much more likely to avoid an emotional or combative response from the person you're talking to. Also, you should listen to what the other person has to say. It's possible and dare I say likely that they have a perspective that you haven't considered. You don't have all the answers either. And sure, just like them, you're unlikely to change your mind overnight. But it is very possible and probable that your perspective can be made more nuanced by listening to other people's views. Like some of you may know that I am super anti-gun, but I'm friends with several people who are gun owners and gun enthusiasts, and their perspectives have definitely informed my views on the topic. Now, it didn't completely change my mind. I still think guns are pretty dumb, but it did change the way that I think about it now that I know a little bit more about what it's like to be a gun owner. When people find out that I make videos about police political and social topics, they often want to debate or discuss things with me. And I'm happy to have civil conversations with anyone and explain my point of view and listen to other points of view. But I feel absolutely zero obligation to convince anyone of anything. Sometimes it happens, and I'm not gonna lie and say it's not dope when it does happen. And in this video, I am arguing that you probably should too. But again, you are free to disagree. <laughs> Now, I've talked about this on social media a couple of times, and there seem to be a few common ideas that come up. First, there's this idea rampant on social media that we have this duty to purge all of the problematic people out of our lives. It's like this guilt by association thing where if you're friends with or close to someone who has apparently bad ideas, then you must be just as bad as they are. And therefore, you either need to drop these people like a bad habit or find a way to fix them so they're not problematic anymore. Of course, I think this is ridiculous. This assumes, first of all, that you've got it all figured out and you've somehow earned the right to be some kind of arbiter of righteousness that gets to judge whether other people are morally fit, but also, and get used to this because I will never get tired of saying it, humans are complex. It is possible, for example, for a person to at the same time have bad ideas and still be a good person. Now, there is also the case where a person's bad ideas might be a direct attack on you as a person or someone else that you care about. 
Like if you are a gay person and your parents are deeply homophobic. Every relationship dynamic is different and I'm no psychologist or counselor, so I can't really solve that issue. But I do think attempting to find a human connection is at least worth a try. As I said before, simply try to be understood rather than change people's minds. And if all else fails, there's no rule that says you have to talk about this kind of stuff. Like if it's impossible to have a conversation about certain topics without getting angry and stressed out and having your day ruined, I'm not sure why you would do it. Your job is not to fix people. Your job is to be the best person you can be, and I think that involves taking care of your emotional and mental health. And of course, there are situations where you might be literally trapped. Maybe your family is genuinely toxic and they won't leave you alone. You can't avoid these conversations and you can't change their minds. This is an unfortunate situation, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that these kinds of situations don't exist. And again, I'm no expert. If possible, you should consider talking to someone who is. But beyond that, just try to simply survive. Life is shitty sometimes. That's just kind of a fact of being a person, but it doesn't have to stay that way forever. Envision and strive towards a better situation. And unfortunately, every situation is different, so I can't be more specific than that. But if you're in a situation like that, I am rooting for you. Honestly, if your goal is to impact people and make people think about stuff, I suggest making things. Make art, create content. Not only is it a great way to share ideas and start conversations, but it's also an excellent form of cathartic self-expression. And if people want to engage with it, then they can. And beyond that, I say spend more time working on yourself and becoming the most honest, assertive, kind, and open-minded person that you can be, rather than spending so much time trying to fix other individuals. Ultimately, that's kind of on them to do themselves. That's just me, though. What do you think? Hey, did you know that you can watch this video as well as all of my other videos on Nebula as well? What's Nebula, you ask? Nebula is a video platform actually owned by creators, including people like myself and others you may have heard of, like Lindsay Ellis, H Bomber Guy, Cat Black, and many, many more. I like to think of it as kind of like YouTube, except only the good videos. Nebula was built to give creators like myself another place to share our content without having to worry about getting demonetized or pleasing some ever-changing algorithm. But there are also Nebula originals that you can't find on YouTube or anywhere else, such as Story Mode, a series exploring storytelling in video games created by the folks behind the great YouTube channel Lessons from the Screenplay. There are no pre-roll ads, of course, and in fact, going forward, all of my videos can be watched on Nebula with no sponsor segments. So this part that you're watching right now, if you go to Nebula, it's not there. Which leads me to the sponsor of this video, CuriosityStream. We at Nebula have actually partnered with CuriosityStream, which, if you don't know, is a streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from any subject and topic that you can imagine. Science, history, pop culture, you name it. So it's a perfect fit with all of the smart creators that you'll find on Nebula. So we worked out a deal that if you go to curiositystream.com slash T1J and sign up for CuriosityStream using the code T1J, you'll also get a subscription to Nebula absolutely free. To make it even better, for a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% percent off of his annual plan. That brings the total cost of a yearly subscription down to less than $15 a year, not month, year, for both CuriosityStream and Nebula. After you sign up on CuriosityStream, I suggest checking out this short presentation called Unraveling the Creative Mind. It's a really interesting exploration into the science of creativity and its possible relationship to mental illness. So once again, sign up at curiositystream.com slash T1J and enter the the code T1J to get unlimited access to both CuriosityStream and Nebula for less than $15 a year. That's an amazing deal. And not only that, it is a fantastic way to support me as well as many, many other smart creators.